Good morning, and welcome to EA. Uh, we celebrate wonders of ministry in this place. Thank you for being with us on this special day. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. Who sets before us the ways of life and death. We are gathered in the presence of Jesus the Christ, who calls us to accept the call. We are gathered who sustains us in trial and rejoicing. To Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be blessing and honor, glory forever and ever. Amen. Our first hymn. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. And we use confession number two. Merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. To have done, But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their sins. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promise declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting Unto as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven according to his promise in the God. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. 
The Lord's name be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly truth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of, uh, we're con continuing in the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children? First, so Moses cried to the Lord, they're almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us? Or Our sight verses 1 through 9, and we will read responsively. Unto you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who transgress. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions, according to for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is God, therefore God instructs sinners in the way. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble God's way. The Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, the second chapter, the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, and it is thought that this was an early Christian hymn from which Paul is quoting, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross." Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. 
And finally, our gospel today is from Matthew's gospel, uh, the 20th chapter, the first 16 verses. And this is Jesus speaking. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went, when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again at noon and uh, about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and, and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said, to, they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they had received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you've made them equal to us who have borne the heat, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here end our scriptures for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. Our next hymn, number 281. striving would be losing. Would not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing, dost ask who that may be, Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord, sab out his name from age to age the same, and he will win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is 
sure. One little word shall fail him. That word above all earthly parts, no thanks to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through Him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. His kingdom is forever. Let us say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer this morning is going to be the anniversary prayer as found on page 549, which we will pray, which we will pray responsively. But we also want to continue to lift up those who have asked us for prayer. Uh, we want to continue to lift up Alyssa as she recovers from surgery, lift up Aaron, uh, lift up Faith Hutton, lift up Michael, uh, lift up the daughter of Shannon Zilmore. Evangeline Coco, uh, Pete Mulligan. Uh, we want to continue to lift up Al and Carmela. Um, I did uh, talk to Al uh, earlier this week. Uh, Carmela is home. Uh, there's a home health care aide uh, coming in, and Carmela is making slow progress. Uh, but, please, but please do continue to pray uh, for for, for uh, Carmela and for Al to have the uh, to have the strength to. Uh, continue to care for her. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we rejoice before thee in the wondrous providence that has brought us to this day. For the manifold blessings thou hast bestowed upon us, we praise thee, O Lord. For Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of the church, for his life, which is the light of the world, for his cross by which we are saved, for his resurrection, whereby we know that life is eternal, for his words of truth and for his love by which the ages are redeemed, we praise thee, O Lord. For the church, which our fathers and mothers established and nurtured with sacrifice and devotion, for the blessed heritage they have given to us, their children, for courageous faith, for freedom and enlightenment and the vision that sees beyond the years. We praise thee, O Lord. For the blessed company of all who have gone before us in the way of salvation, for pastors who have served their generation with devotion and vision, for men and women of piety and zeal who have given to the church the labor of their hearts and hands and minds, for devout and faithful women and men whose devotion to thy house has made, their lives be has, has made their lives beautiful. For all sacred and hallowed memories enshrined in this church, we praise thee, O Lord. For the congregation gathered here this day, 
for the bond of fellowship which is ours in Christ, for the comradeship of labor and service which we enjoy in thy church, for the union of heart and mind which comes to us as we seek to do thy holy will. We praise thee, O Lord. Grant that we, thy people, may be baptized anew this day with the cleansing fire of thy Holy Spirit. Kindle in us a vision of thy righteous kingdom. Anoint us with power to do great things for thee. Stir our hearts to serve our generation with truth and love, so that thy kingdom may come and thy will be done. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We praise thee, O God, for the endless renewal of life. Open our eyes to receive new light and our ears to hear the voices that are calling us to make the world new by love. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Grant that thy church may be delivered from traditions which have lost their life, from usage which has lost its spirit, from institutions which no longer give life and power to their generation, that the church may ever shine as a light in the world and be a city set on a hill. Hear our prayer, O Lord. O eternal God, who did send night Holy Spirit upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, we pray that as thou didst strengthen their hearts with daring and fortitude, so thou would confirm in us their faithful labors, their high vision, their holy purpose. Grant us so to live that the generations to come may find their memorial not alone in graven tablets, but may read it in the living record of an active faith, an unswerving loyalty to truth, a self-forgetting service of mankind. Be this, be this the gift of thy grace bestowed upon us. Be this the memorial of the just, transmitted to their children's children through the long centuries to come, and thine shall be the kingdom and the power and the glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee in the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. And then our, our, our prayers, uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with all who have passed from this life. Eternal rest grant them and light perpetual shine upon them. Be with all who are recovering with, from illness of body or mind, those we have named and those known to you. We pray for the homeless, that you would provide for them and protect them, for the veterans, that you would heal the wounds of war in their, in their lives. We pray for, the, for abused, for battered spouses and abused children, that you would provide for them and protect them. We pray for Millie and Dorothy and Nancy. We pray for the, our leader, the leaders of our country, our commonwealth and our city, that you would grant them a vision of what you would have, a vision of the leadership you would have them to give. We pray for all, we pray for peace in the world, in this country, in this city, and in this neighborhood. We pray for all the churches of Bridesburg that you, especially those of the Bridesburg Council and those of the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference, that you would provide for their needs and prosper their work. Most especially, Lord, on this anniversary Sunday. We thank you for bringing us through 159 years of service to you, and we pray that you will be Emmanuel, God with us for, for years and decades and centuries to come. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, announcements. Um, I want to thank uh, Sean and Carol and all who uh, help them with their with the, our monthly outreach to the homeless. Uh, Sean said that thirty that thirty two meals were provided to the homeless. Thank you, uh, thank you for your financial support of this ministry. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, thank you for being being with Sean and Carol to car to carry out the ministry. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, we will continue uh oh and next uh next sunday is world communion sunday uh so next sunday will be a communion sunday um so please uh please be prepared with the with the elements we continue with our next hymn number 324 Right. 
Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever and her confidence alone. To this temple where we call thee, come, O Lord of hosts today, with thy wonted loving kindness, Hear thy people as they pray, and thy fullest benediction shed within its walls alway. Here vouchsafe to all thy servants what they ask of thee to gain. What they gain from thee forever, with the blessed to retain. And hereafter in thy glory, <coughs> more with thee to reign. Praise and Lord, honor to the Father, Lord, and honor to the Son. Lord, and honor to the Spirit, ever three and ever one. One in might and one in glory, while unending ages run. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are, the, you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy 159th birthday, Emmanuel Church. Because of the pandemic, this 159th church anniversary is different from any we've celebrated since I've been here, and I'll wager for some years before. Uh, during the 1918 uh, flu epidemic, I don't, or 1917, 1918 flu epidemic, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know uh, whether they gathered or not, possibly not, but it's probably been just about that long since uh, we've celebrated an anniversary at a distance as we are today. Of course, normally we'd be together and we'd have lunch after church, things we can't do this year because of the potential threat to, to health and life. But yet, gathered or scattered, we are still Emmanuel Church, still united by history and memory, still united in love for God, one another, and our neighbors, still calling on God as Emmanuel, which means God with us, even though we can't be together in one place with one another. Indeed, the strange circumstances of this anniversary may nudge us to think of what we mean when we say God is with us. With us in what ways? In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 and 24, through, through the writings of the prophet, God invites the people to expand their concept of God. Am I, a God. am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I, so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? One of the reasons God called on the Jews to reject idolatry is that idols are simply too small and too limited a representation of the almighty God of the universe. The makers of an idol may try to represent God's strength, but in so doing negate God's compassion, may represent God's life-giving powers and fertility, but negate God's justice and mercy. And an idol can be only in one place, while in God's words to Jeremiah, God is both nearby and far away, filling heaven and earth. And though we don't worship physical idols, we 
All of us, in, in different ways, create mental and spiritual idols that likewise limit God, that are likewise too small. Identifying God with our nation, or our race, or our political party, or our theological or denominational tradition. No, God is not a Catholic or a Baptist. God, God fills heaven and earth. God transcends all of those labels. And given the enormous challenges we face, we cannot afford to worship a small, limited God. No, we need a big God who is both, who is both near and far away, who fills heaven and earth. The God who created the cosmos and yet is closer than our breath. Who indeed is not only all around us, but also within us. So while today we celebrate God's saving acts among our faith community here on Fillmore Street, we know that God is with us not only when we gather on Fillmore Street, but with us as we carry on our daily lives. And by the power of technology in however limited and faltering ways, we are learning in new ways to be with one another in spirit while separated by geography. Indeed, one of the purposes of gathering, whether in one place or online, is to be strengthened so that not only is God with us, but we are with God, united and aligned with God's saving action in the world, not working at cross purposes with God. In our reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, we see Paul doing something similar to what we're doing here today. <coughs> Paul is ministering at a distance to the sisters and brothers at Philippi, at a distance not because of a pandemic, but because of Paul's imprisonment. Paul is in prison, locked behind doors. He cannot be with them in person. But by sending letters, Paul is using the technology of the day to offer a kind of virtual worship. Indeed, in this passage, as I said earlier, Bible scholars believe that Paul is quoting from an already existing hymn, which known, known among New Testament scholars as the Christ hymn, to which, and, and so if we can imagine those readers hearing Paul's words and they, they heard the words of a hymn they knew, they, they may, you know, they would have known not only words but melody. And perhaps we can imagine the faithful at Philippi humming along or even breaking into singing as this section of Paul's letter was read. Paul closes this section of his letter by acknowledging that the congregation at Philippi has obeyed him, not only in his presence, but much more in his absence. Paul tells him, though, he cannot be with, with them to, be, to let the same mind be in them that was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself of heavenly glory to be born in human likeness, and emptied himself yet further to suffer death on a cross. As Christ emptied himself, Paul asked them to empty themselves, to look to the interests of others and not their own. For our anniversary celebration, today's gospel reading gives us a haunting picture of the reign of God, a haunting picture of what it means to be church. Jesus tells a story of a landowner, an owner of a vineyard, who needs to bring in the harvest of grapes. Employment is on a day labor basis. There's no expectation of a long-term employment relationship, no expectation of being paid regularly every two weeks. That wasn't the world Jesus lived in. The understanding was that the worker will put in the time required that day and get paid at the end of that same day. He may show up to work the next day if needed or not. There's no expectation either way. Many in our day barely scrape by on day labor, I'm told there are locations near Kensington and Allegheny where a van pulls up and the first so many people are allowed into the van, taken to the work side of the day, and dropped back off at the end of the day at K&A with cash in hand. And so that, 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 that world of day labor is not so foreign to us. So the landowner goes out looking for day laborers. He goes out early, probably six in the morning, finds some workers, promises them the usually daily wage, and sends them off to work. But there weren't enough workers, and he needed work done. So he went out again at nine in the morning, went out again at noon, went out again at three in the afternoon, and at five in the evening. He sends each group into the vineyard, telling them, I'll pay you what is fair. He pays those, he, he, at six in the evening, he gathers the workers to pay them. And he first pays those who were hired at five o'clock, just an hour earlier, the full day's wage. And apparently the five o'clock workers made the mistake of blabbing because the others, knew, <coughs> the others knew what they'd been paid and expected more for their labors. 
But all were paid a full day's wage and no more, those that worked all day and those who worked only for portions of the day. And of course, those who had borne the full heat and burden of the day felt cheated. But the landowner reminds them that he had fulfilled the agreed upon obligation, that and if he wanted to be generous to the others, it was his money to spend, after all. If we think of the rewards of the reign of God, the rewards of being faithful, in terms of some sort of material terms, that sense of unfairness in Jesus' parable remains. But if we think in terms of destination, where we end up, and of transformation, of how we change along the way, perhaps the illustration makes more sense. In a very simplistic sense, if we're on our way to heaven, we end up in the same place, in the presence of the same loving God, whether we've labored for, for the full day or just for an hour. And the transformation that takes place along the way is the self-emptying, the Greek word is kenosis, that Paul called on the congregation at Philippi to accomplish, an emulation of Christ who emptied himself of glory for our salvation. On this anniversary Sunday, we celebrate our longtime members, those who have truly borne the heat and burden of the day, in many cases as their parents and grandparents and generations before bore the heat and burden of the day in, the, in this same place. Without their having borne the heat and burden of the day all day long, we would not be here. Without their faithful showing up, the, their faithfulness in church work, their faithful giving, the doors of Emmanuel Church would have closed years ago. Without the faithfulness of a longtime members, this church might have been sold to a church of another denomination or repurposed into an antique shop or an artistic space or simply left to crumble under the forces of nature and time, as all saints has and so many other churches have as well. Without the faithfulness of our longtime members, our cemetery would rapidly have become overgrown, a nuisance and a blight to the neighborhood. As it is, even with Frank's lawn service cutting the grass regularly, it's all I can do to keep some of the graves from being engulfed by vines and sumac and other random weeds and shrubs, and I can never keep up with it. There's always more to do. And parenthetically, I'll add, every, every, every week I'm a little slower than I was the week before. <laughs> Time marches on. Last Sunday afternoon, after church, I was at the 12, 25th anniversary celebration of a community group that works to house homeless people that had gotten its start essentially by breaking into the abandoned St. Edward the Confessor Roman Catholic Church at 8th and York Street, closed since 1993, and letting the homeless people set up living arrangements. Years later, a deliverance church used the building for a time, and their name was on the building. It no longer said uh, St. Edward the Confessor Church, it said Highway, you know, Highway Deliverance Church of God or something like that. For the, for the anniversary celebration, this 25th anniversary gathering, the homeless advocacy group was back at St. Edward's, and the church doors had been opened. And along with others, I walked around inside, seeing the old altar, the stations of the cross with paint chipping away, the stained glass windows more intact in some places than others, Places where the confessional booths appeared to have been ripped out of the walls, graffiti covering other parts of the walls, as, and I stumbled a few times over places where nails had popped up out of the floorboard an inch or more. And while I was mostly in the spirit of the group, a quarter of my mind was saying, this could have been a manual church if not, if not for the faithfulness of our members. This can still be a manual church if that faithfulness ever falters. So we are grateful to those who have borne the heat and burden of years and decades of faithfulness to Emmanuel Church. We are likewise grateful to those who haven't been with us as long, but who are still every bit as much a vital part of this community. Both the cost and joy of discipleship are available to all, those who have been with, part of us for a lifetime, those who have been not, not been with us quite as long, but who are dedicating their current lives to serving God in this place. I am incredibly grateful for the welcome that the long -timers, that our long-timers have offered those who have joined more recently, and I'm incredibly grateful for the new energy that the more recent members have brought. Life in the church, life in the kingdom of God is not a sprint, it's not even a marathon, but it's a relay race. All of us are at different points in our life's journey, 
and at any given time there are passings of the baton from elder to younger. Meanwhile, there's never an, uh, an end to the need for laborers in the Lord's vineyard. And let us be clear about the nature of the work in the vineyard. Earlier, I spoke of the work that's been done keeping up the building and cemetery. But as church, we are not a historical preservation society. We are not a cemetery maintenance organization. Building and cemetery are not the end purpose of our being here, but tools, only tools, to carry out the greater purpose of reaching those around us with the life-changing good news of Jesus Christ, that their lives may be transformed as our lives have been transformed. Yesterday, Sean and Carol and their group carried out Emmanuel's monthly homeless outreach, offering a meal to 32 homeless people. And we always hope that God can use the meal and that momentary mom that moment of contact and act of kindness to, to kindle some spark of hope. Offering hope, nurturing faith, showing love in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> this is the true work of Emmanuel Church. Uh, we saw this work of, this work of offering faith, hope, nurturing faith, and showing love uh, by the Reverend uh, Emmanuel Berenger, and I um, am going to show a picture. I couldn't get the I couldn't get the pictures out of the I couldn't get the pictures out of storage, but uh, the Reverend Emmanuel Berenger was uh, he was not our first pastor, but he was a very impactful pastor. Uh, he was pastor of Emmanuel Church from 1863 to 64, and it was under his leadership that the Orphan's Home of the Shepherd of the Lambs uh, was founded in 1863. Uh, it began here in Bridesburg uh, under Reverend uh, Gansenbein. It moved to Wormelsdorf, where it, it, where it continues as Bethany Children's Home. And we think of, we think of the other pastors, uh, Reverend, Reverend Dahlman. Reverend Christian Keller, uh, his, his, uh, I, I, I briefly showed his, uh, his headstone uh, in the cemetery. Reverend John B. Forster, uh, our longest serving pastor from 1883 to 1917. Uh, there are windows in our, con in our church dedicated to him. Uh, the Reverend Felix Steinman, my great grandfather. Reverend Henry Bram. Reverend George Meissner. Reverend Victor Steinberg, who our longest time members uh, remember with great fondness, uh, uh, a pastor who truly gave of, his, uh, of himself to his members, uh, a, a true pastor. Uh, Reverend Vernon Firm, Reverend Ronald J. Keller, and then the ordination of the, the Reverend Charles Williman and the Reverend Fred Manthe. Uh, other Photos, uh, the Reverend Lois Ostermeyer uh, was with us for, from 1975 to 81. Here's the dedication of the, of, of, the, of the headstone. The Reverend Eugene Grau, who, met, who many remember, and uh, a, long a long time ago, and a, a long time ago, that was me. <laughs> uh, boy, did I get old. <laughs> but anyway... Through, through all these pastors and through the, the faithful service of our members, our longtime members and our new members, this, this work of transformation, this work of offering hope, nurturing faith, and showing love in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ has, has, continu has continued. But still... And, 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 it, and it continues wherever our members find themselves. But still, this, this building serves as a gathering place. And the day will come soon, I hope and pray, when the pandemic will subside enough that we can gather here once again. So happy anniversary, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. There's still need for labor in the vineyard. That will not end this side of the grave. But today, we pause for a moment to, get, to give thanks for the past, to give thanks for the present, to give thanks... To, to God and one another, even as we look in faith to God to lead us on in hope for the future and love for those we meet on the journey. Amen. Please join me in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth from, your, from, from this spiritual tabernacle. Go forth from this spiritual house. Go forth from your homes to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in peace to love and serve all to whom God has called us in service. Go forth knowing that we are that we now carry a, bat a, a baton that our fathers and mothers in the faith carried before us, a baton that we hope and pray to pass on to those who come after. And may we, may we, may we run our part of the relay race of the relay race of faith uh, with faith and with courage and with perseverance. May we run our race well. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us each one now and evermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to sing next hymn number 72. Hymn number 72. We will sing the three English verses and then we'll sing the first a uh, verse in German. Now, I do not sing German, but uh, I do not uh, speak German. So uh, as I mangle the pronunciation, sing really loud so you can't hear me. <laughs> but in any case, we will sing hymn number 72. <laughs> of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God the Father now be given the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, who earth and heaven adore for the sin. shall be evermore. Auf Deutsch. Nun dank et alle Gott mit Herzen, Mund und Händen. 
der Große, den Getut, an uns zu allen Enden, der uns von Mutterleib und Kindesbeinen an und selig will so gut, bis er Oh.